Hey, hey, Sammy Do coming to you live from Precious World Office Studios. Real estate mentor and coach and investor, founder of the Real Estate Wholesale Helpline. I want to talk to you today about prerequis prerequisites that are necessary uh, in order to be in the real estate investing business. If you uh, ever thought about getting into the real estate investing business or if you are in the business and still trying to get your first or second deal, uh, you definitely want to subscribe to this channel because we come to you from a grassroots standpoint, giving you the golden nuggets, the secret sauce that you're not getting anywhere else. And I want to talk to you about the two prerequisites uh, to be in this Sammy business. Stay tuned. Live from Precious World Studios, doing it again, dropping another golden nugget. isn't for everybody not everybody's cut out for this business so without these two requisites if you can't acquire these prerequisites this could be a money pit for you so this is why I want to give you the raw grassroots truth about how uh, what you would need in order to be successful in this okay business. so we're talking about the two prerequisites uh, that's necessary in order to get a real into this real estate business and uh, I've already talked about one. Uh, the first one is really that you do need a level of education. And uh, I spoke about that in a different video that you can check out. But uh, in short, the easiest way to get a level of education is to acquire a mentor. And they will save you a lot of money in the long run as well. Uh, but two, uh, the second prerequisite uh, that, I was, that I'm speak of spoke of is a set of skill sets a set of skill sets so there are obviously a number of different skill sets uh, but on today in this video I want to talk about being a listener and listening uh, you have to have a skill set of being able to listen in this business uh, being able to listen to your especially when it comes to your your sellers uh you want to listen to everybody but uh, in order to really get uh the attention of your motivated sellers you definitely want to to listen to them and uh, for a number of different reasons obviously a lot of the things that you're going to need to hear is going to help you come up with a solution based off of their specific situation it's going to also be here to help you to negotiate that solution and even educate them on a solution so it is a win uh, for them as well uh, if you're trying to help them out of a bad situation so I want to give you uh, eight tips I want to give you eight tips on how to uh, really improve your listening skill sets because if you don't have good listening skill sets you're not going to make it in this business so I want to give you eight eight tips um, and the first one would be to demonstrate your listening skills by paraphrasing. Uh, and, we'll, you know, paraphrasing is kind of, you've heard what they said and, and, and it kind of put it in your own words, but in, in a way that they uh, still understand that you understand uh, what they told you. And I found uh, the best way to paraphrase, especially at this point after having done over 100 transactions, um, I usually am able to paraphrase uh, what they've told me based off of an experience of uh, another that was in their same situation or a similar situation. I found the best way, uh, a great way to paraphrase is to bring some stories out of your war chest, out of your chest, and that you can share similar stories and it does a couple of things it first of all it lets you know that you understand exactly what they're going through and secondly it also lets you know that what they're going through is not unique to them although they may feel like it's unique to them but others have, have also gone through what they're going through and 
uh, life still goes on and you were able to help them out and now you're able to help them out as well. Uh, so paraphrasing what they've told you uh, will be, it's a great point um, uh, to, to help improve your, your listening skills. Also, definitely work on making your eye contact. Uh, not everybody has strong eye contact. Um, if you're speaking with someone and you're looking down at the ground or looking somewhere else or you're looking at your phone or, or whatever, uh, it can be a sign of disrespect to them. It could be a sign of that you're not paying attention. I know sometimes even if I'm taking notes um, that, that I'm letting them know, hey, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm actually taking notes, so don't think I'm not listening, and I'll let them know that I'm taking notes, but I'll also still continue to look back up at them uh, to maintain that eye contact because that, that's also a sign of respect and that you are, that, that, that they have your attention and they're not wasting their time speaking with you. Uh, the third point uh, I want to also uh, bring out is to uh, make sure you are aware of your posture. Your, and, and, and you want to have what we call an open posture, a, a posture that uh, is attentive to them. Um, I think many people know that when you got somebody that's kind of crossing their arms and they're patting their feet, they're not really listening. They're either frustrated, probably waiting on the time that they can get their word out or something of that nature. We, we, we kind of know that just from, you know, having debates and arguments with siblings and friends and things of that nature. Well, the same thing happens when you're dealing with other folks in this business. You want to have an open posture. Uh, so what I would suggest is, you know, if you guys were sitting down somewhere, just kind of, you know, lean forward or... Um, if um, if you're standing up, I tend to kind of stand with a three-point stance, not with my arms crossed, but just kind of uh, leaning forward sometimes with my notepad because I'm writing notes down, uh, if I'm writing notes down, but uh, just kind of having an open posture where you look like you're being receptive to what they're talking about. Uh, number four is... I want you to be able to know how to ask open-ended questions, not closed-ended questions, but open-ended questions, just so you understand the difference. An open-ended question is a, is a question that gets them to talking that's more than just a yes or no versus a closed-ended question. The answer is a yes or no. You want to ask open-ended questions because the more you get them to talk to you, for one, the more it appears that rapport is being built with your seller. They feel like they have someone to talk to. They, they're trusting you, obviously, because they are speaking to you. And uh, not only that, uh, the more that you are able to hear and take in, the better position you're going to be when it comes time to negotiate. But more importantly, for the sake of that conversation and listening, when they're talking and you're being quiet and you're not talking over them and and you're just asking open-ended questions to get more information out, it really, really shows uh, that you are attentive and that you're, 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 you're trying to understand and, and probably are understanding. And not only that, just because they're talking to you, it's building great rapport. It's allowing you to build great rapport with them. So asking open-ended questions is number four. Number five you definitely want to remember any past details. Also, understand this. Um, little things. Um, when we talk about past details, little things. Uh, I, I can tell you, for instance, uh, well, let me start here. Oftentimes, your first initial contact with a, a seller is not going to be the one that, you know, gets your contract and agree it. Sometimes there's going to be multiple contacts and because it's all part of the rapport building situation. You can be building rapport over days, over weeks, over months, heck, even years at times if, if they know that you've been in the businesses and all of a sudden they want to look you up. So remembering details and little details goes a long way. Um, I know, uh, speaking with one where, um, 
in the process of them selling their house, uh, they had a situation with, you know, someone that had passed away recently, uh, which also kind of led to them wanting to get out the house and all of that kind of thing. But just to kind of be able to, to, to remember the details that, you know, hey, I do, a, you know, I do cons share condolences with, you know, your, your husband or whomever that, you know, that passed. And they can still appreciate that and you know checking on you know before we really talk business just want to see how you're doing um, you know are you recovering uh, you know are you getting the support remembering little details details like uh, you know that maybe they you know they've gotten laid off and uh, their field is in you know the, the you know their salesperson that's their field and being able to say, hey, you know, just how, how's the job search going? Uh, you know, I know uh, <clears throat> you were in sales before. Um, have you had any luck there? And if, you know, if I got some pointers, I might share with them. But that all goes into being able to build rapport, remembering little small details, you know, that their, their, their brother's their their brother's wife had a baby or something of that nature and and the reason they weren't able to meet with you then was because they had to go and you know go to the baby shower or the baby was being born or whatever and just having those types of details this is why having a CRM in your business is also important that you can make those different types of notes so when you're going through your notes and you're speaking with someone you can bring up some of those smaller uh, details of the past and it helps you with building rapport and lets them know that you've really been listening to them. Um, I probably spent a long time on that one. Number six, uh, and this is more while you're in person, but you know, have some nodding, some gestures. Uh, yes is, you know, shaking your head, yes is always a, a, a more of affirmative type of thing to kind of get them in agreement with you. But you're listening to them, so you're letting them know that you understand. But just kind of having a nodding situation, obviously, time you, you kind of want to avoid this part uh, if you can, because knows is there's a subliminal message that none of this stuff is going to work, blah blah blah. So, but you know, you don't want to be too extreme with the yes when it's you're talking about bad news. <laughs> so, but just being engaged physically with the conversation. And they can they can see that from you helps you improve your listening skills with them and it helps build that rapport uh, showing some form of gesture some form of nodding number seven uh, you want to there's a technique called active listening and active listening involving mirroring mirroring sort of like looking in the mirror so I can tell you uh, I'm a former uh, forensic interrogator uh, in my previous corporate career and having been an ex-cop and all that kind of stuff but uh, there is there, there are some tactics sometimes depending on who you're interrogating or doing an interview with where if they're sitting back you sit back if they're crossing their legs you cross your legs as well if they lean forward you lean forward and, and just kind of you know when you're doing the things that they're doing it kind of shows an alignment and an agreement that you guys are on the same page and moving together that's the theory behind it it shows empathy it shows that you understand their side of the conversation that's that's really the key to that active lift, listening and mirroring uh, like a mirror mirroring uh, the effect of their body language um, and uh, the, the last point would be eight. Uh, you want to listen to understand, listen to understand, and that's the antithesis of listening to respond. You want to listen to understand. This is going to help you again uh, in the long run uh, as you continue to listen, you understand where they are. It's going to help you, uh, especially when it comes to the negotiating piece, to be able to help educate them to the place that you need to be that they need to be that you can see that it'll be a, that they will see that it'll be a win for them as well so listening to understand not listening to respond but listening to understand these are maybe eight ways uh, that will help you to improve your listening skills and sometimes you can kind of practice just you know practice on your friends and family just simply with these eight nuggets 
um, while you're having your next conversations in the living rooms or at the lunch at the table and things of that nature just kind of you know they don't have to know what you're doing but you can kind of practice these eight little skills that uh, I've just shared with you just so you can kind of get in the practice of it and you'll, you'll be surprised how this would actually even improve those relationships as well because it's just something about those skill sets that help you build a better rapport with the folks you're engaging with so listening is a very very important skill set in the real estate investing business and if you again this business is not for everybody uh, but for those that either have the skill sets or can acquire the skill set you definitely will have a shot in this business so if you're not a good listener don't waste your money trying to get into this business uh, don't waste your time trying to get in this business but if you can acquire good listening skill sets this this will be one of the skill sets that is a must uh, to get in the real estate investing business and if you like this information please like uh, the, uh, the video and uh, even share this with someone that you think might be helpful and if you really want more uh, time uh, with me in particular because you, you, you want to get some more advice on your business and even possibly look at uh, obtaining mentorship and coaching because again that's going to be the quickest and shortest way to success in, in, in the program that I provide I, I try to help my students get their first deal within the first 30 to 60 days making anywhere from three to thirty thousand dollars Hit the uh, real estate wholesale helpline link in the description, and that will get you allow you to schedule yourself to get onto my calendar. Uh, it's not a webinar; it is a live video conference with me, uh, to speaking with you about getting your business either started or uh, a little bit more stable or whatever those needs might be from you. So, click the link in the description if you want to get on my calendar. And until then, I'll see you at the top because the bottom sure is crowded. God bless. Hey, hey, Sammy, do the do root back at you. Hey, uh, are you smelling when I'm cooking? Are you picking up when I'm putting down? You like these golden nuggets that we are dropping at you? Well, if you do, please like the video that you just seen. Also, subscribe to this platform. You can do that by hitting the red uh, subscribe now button somewhere here or there. Uh, look for it. Hit the subscribe button. Uh, that would encourage me to continue to put out uh, more content like this and uh, check out my library of other videos as well. Also, don't forget, if you need to set your appointment, the link is in the description, Real Estate Wholesale Helpline. And until then, I will see you at the top because the bottom sure is crowded. God bless Sammy. Doom, doom.